Hello, and welcome to another episode of Psyche and Cinema. In this episode, we look at an important question from the Jungian perspective, which is, how is your soul nourished? And we look at it in the context of the 1987 Danish film, Babette's Feast, by uh, director Gabriel Axel. So we can distinguish between two types of activity. Activity that is directed by and seeks the fulfillment of the drives of the ego, and activity that is driven by the psyche or the soul of the subject. Now, that is in no way meant to detract from ego-based activity that is essential in order for you to get ahead in the world. But it's just the idea that there's, there's a distinction between activity that seeks your advancement in the world and seeks the fulfillment of certain goals and kind of imperatives. An activity that comes from a, a more soulful place that seeks the kind of realization and expression of soul or psyche in the world. Now, a useful way to think about this, to think about this idea of soul and, and the way the soul is nourished, is actually to think of the metaphor of eating or feasting. So, psychologically, eating is, use, is a useful metaphor in the sense that we are called on to, to eat of life, to, to chew on life, to, to swallow, to digest, and ultimately to be nourished by life. And this makes the idea of a feast uh, a useful way of thinking about this idea of the soul being nourished, if we look at it metaphorically or symbolically. And what I want to bring across to you is that there's two elements, two important elements in the soul being nourished. There's both the kind of sensuous Dionysian physical element, which is the actual eating and in kind of carnivorous activity of consuming the feast, as well as the participation in the spirit of the occasion, the ritualization of the occasion and feasting and congregating with a group of souls. Now, in the movie, the chef Babette, who's a chef for two spinsters that oversee a pious community for their late father, it turns out that Babette is a classically trained French chef. And after she wins a lottery, she decides to use her winnings to put on a proper French meal for the pious community. The sisters receive this, they welcome this gesture, but there's a concern that it may be too sensuous an affair for their very austere community. And so a rule is put in place that the, the congregants at the dinner won't uh, comment on the meal. One of the guests, however, General Lawrence, uh, who's an old flame of one of the sisters, is not aware of this rule and being a man of the world and knowing what f proper French cuisine tastes like, uh, cannot but praise the meal abundantly as the various courses arrive. Let's watch. Amontillado. Den bästa Amontillado jag någonsin har smakat. Detta är otvivelaktigt äkta sköldpaddsoppa. Inspired by the sublime feast, General Lawrence stands up to give a speech on truth and mercy, definitely the film's highlight. And this portrays something significant about this idea of how the soul is nourished, that there's a relationship between the sensuous, the visceral, the physical, our embodied selves, and the spiritual. And it's somewhere at the meeting point of these two that the soul is nourished. Let's watch his speech. Barmhärtighet och sannhet mötas. 
Rättvisa och fröjd ska kyssa varandra. Människan tror i sin svaghet och sin kortsynthet att hon måste göra sitt val här i livet. Och fruktar den risk hon där vid löper. Vi känner frukten. Men nej, vårt val är utan betydelse. Den tid kommer då våra ögon öppnas och vi omsider inser att nåden är utan ände. Vi ska blott vänta i tillit och mottaga i tacksamhet. Nåden ställer inga villkor. Och se allt som vi har valt blev oss givet. Allt där vi har avstått från blir oss beviljat. Ja, vi får också det tillbaka som vi har kastat bort. Varmhärtighet och sannhet mötas. Rättvisa och fröjd ska kyssa varann. The scene from Babette's feast really provides us with a useful symbolization of this question how the soul is nourished. The act of feasting. Every feast is, in a sense, a reenactment of the Eucharist, of the Last Supper. And it has the elements of both immediacy, participation in the physical act of being seated at the table, being with one's congregation, eating, participating in the feast. And also the transcendence, the ritualization of this act. The fact that it's a group of souls that are gathered together at the table. So with this in mind, it's worth thinking about who is it that feasts with you? Do they nurture you? And do you nurture them? And ultimately, are you sated? Are you filled by the meal? Or are you left wanting?